and of course, you all. This city is one of the safest cities to live. We know that. Why? Because of you all out there, right there. For 30 years, we've done our best to provide, hopefully, what you all call protection. I think they do a great job. I know they do it every day, day in, day out. Children, thank you for standing by us through all the holidays and the weekends and nights from our home. Thank you for being there. We love you. I know it wasn't easy. Gentlemen, I have so many people to thank. I was not have time to do a right commission meeting, but my party, you're going to get the poor thanks on. Our, <laughs> I want to start with this man right here, our chief butcher now. If I only had more time, sir, and it's been awesome. Right. You are awesome. You know that. You know what I think about you. When I told this man the first day I saw him, welcome to the Creek family, he said, it's your house. I'm just a guest. I said, no, sir, you are a family. And I think he knows that now with Barb and Connor. You're an awesome leader. You're taking us places to I never even dreamed. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your friendship. Greg Lee's in the back right there. Another person I want to thank personally. SWAT training. He's the SWAT commander, probably one of the most elite SWAT teams in the country, Broward Sheriff's Office. I've known him ever since. He's a great friend. He's my mentor. He keeps me uh, in things in perspective for me. People know I can get a little excited at times. <laughs> Um, thank you for everything you've done. Jeanette Camacho, where are you? My psychologist, my in-house psychologist. She has a couch in her office. I use it quite often. She's our legal advisor. You know, thank you for everything you do. Uh, I really mean that. Everyone records, Linda Tropat, the Liz, what we do without records. I mean, this department has so many different parts, so many people. Tom, Everly, the, the, all you guys. I don't have time to name you all, but I love all of you. You know that. Um, and just on a other note, you know, I feel very fortunate. I took the oath of office the last time with Gene. The oath of office 30 years ago right here. This building was brand new. We only had like 40 cops. We didn't know what we were going to do with all that space. Now we don't have enough space. <laughs> um, but there's 5,027 officers in that time span from 1987 to this day to include poor officer Miller who did not make it home. They're the true heroes in my book. Okay? So do this for me. I ask all of you, when you leave your house, you put that uniform on, you give your wife or loved one a hug, a kiss, you tell them you love them, and you may not get that chance again like the 5,027 heroes that did not. And I stand here, thank you for giving me a little time. Before you find me close to the end, I know I have to go fast, I'm sorry about that. Um, I stand you wearing this uniform for the last time. I can't tell you what this feels like, but it feels pretty good. I feel a, uh, a great sense of pride with this badge, with this patch, what you all over the last, the whole time I've been here, built this place, taking it to the next step. It seems like every day, every year, thanks to the fine leadership we have, all you guys moving on. It's, it's a great pleasure as a sergeant. What was my number one rule? To get you home. The second rule, to get you where you need to be. It's nice to see people getting moving finally. I know you just want me to get the heck out of here. I'm not spot. I get it. I get it. But I wear this uniform for the last time with great pride, great accomplishment. And each and every one of you that are in this room had a part in that of me standing right here, right now. So I can go home for the last time. Thank you. <laughs>